This video was brought to you by Incogni. Today, Moldova's breakaway Transnistria province calls for Russian protection. Germany nearly shoots down a US drone by mistake, and China pushes ahead with an even tougher Hong Kong security law. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Thursday the 29th of February. Politicians in Moldova's Kremlin-backed breakaway region of Transnistria have appealed to the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, to protect the 220,000 Russians living in Moldova against pressure from Chisinau. Now, this appeal did stop short of directly asking Moscow to integrate Transnistria into Russia, as had previously been speculated. Since 1992, after the Soviet Union's collapse, ethnic Russians and Ukrainians in Moldova's Transnistria region feared marginalization as Moldova pivoted towards Romania and away from Russia. After a short conflict, Transnistria gained de facto sovereignty and has functioned as an unrecognized independent state, maintaining close ties to Russia. Transnistria also has a Russian military presence, receives Russian financial subsidies, and uses Russian as one of its official languages. Now, the situation hasn't actually changed that much since 1992, and tensions haven't really been stoked. But since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, things have changed. That's because there have been fears in the West and Moldova that the Kremlin could use Transnistria to open a new front in the southwest of Ukraine in the direction of Edessa. To deter Russian influence, Moldova was granted EU candidate status in 2022, and in December last year opened accession negotiations alongside neighbouring Ukraine. Right after, however, Putin signed a decree that simplified Russian naturalization of Moldovans, Kazakhs, and Belarusians, making it easier for Transnistrians to get Russian citizenship. In fact, Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Galazin has warned Moldova that any attempt to resolve the Transnistria issue by force will be considered an attack on Russia. For their part, the EU has stated that Moldova does not need to resolve Transnistria's status to join the bloc. Yet, the Moldovan government since January has arguably taken actions to start integrating the breakaway region back into Moldova. For instance, Moldova introduced new customs duties on January 1st, 2024, which stirred up some controversy by requiring import duties from Transnistrian businesses. These new customs duties levelled against Transnistrians have angered officials there, who say that the measures harm local residents and businesses. Protests soon erupted, and the breakaway state's government has accused Moldova of starting an economic blockade. Moldova, however, has repeatedly denied putting pressure on Transnistria, and accused Russia of taking advantage of the situation and destabilizing the region. Former Moldovan Defense Minister Anatol Sala outlined that Russia's aims are to take control of Moldova and block Ukraine from the western flank, then to block Moldova's collaboration with Romania and Moldova's accession to the EU. Therefore, Western leaders are undoubtedly paying very close attention to how the Kremlin will respond to Transnistria's request, and what could happen next. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us in your podcast app to listen along. In news from the Red Sea, a German warship nearly shot down a US drone by mistake, according to recent reports. The German Hesse frigate is deployed in the Red Sea as part of an EU mission to protect commercial shipping from attacks by Houthi militants in Yemen. But Germany's defence minister confirmed that the ship opened fire after efforts to identify an unknown drone were not successful, but that the drone was not hit as the two missiles crashed into the sea because of a technical defect, according to Der Spiegel. Now, the German Defence Ministry said that the incident involved a reconnaissance drone belonging to an ally, without naming the ally, but Der Spiegel reports say that it was indeed a US drone. This confusion could have been due to the fact that the drone may not have been operating as part of the Red Sea mission, but rather as part of an unrelated US anti-terror operation in the region. Nevertheless, despite the potential embarrassment of the incident, the German naval presence has not been without success. The German warship did apparently successfully shoot down two Houthi drones over the Red Sea on Tuesday within a 20-minute window. Over to China now, where ministers have hit back at Britain's Foreign Secretary, David Cameron, for criticising an upcoming Hong Kong security law. 
The Hong Kong office of Beijing's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said on Thursday that the remarks were irresponsible and that they were maliciously smearing and attacking Hong Kong's human rights, freedoms and rule of law. This all comes after Cameron, who was the UK's prime minister during what he termed the golden era for UK-Chinese relations in the 2000s, said that vague references to external forces and external interference in the legislation would threaten the legitimate and lawful diplomatic and consular activity. Similar sentiments were also echoed by the US State Department. The proposed law, known as Article 23, will target crimes including treason, theft of state secrets, espionage, sabotage, sedition, and external interference, including from foreign governments, a law which is expected to be approved soon. This isn't the first time that something like this has happened either. The first time that Hong Kong introduced a national security law back in 2020, the city saw mass pro-democracy protests and riots as people demonstrated against the new powers, which meant acts including like subversion and collusion with foreign forces could be punished with life imprisonment. So it'll be interesting to see how the city, as well as the international community, respond to these new updates. In other news, a corruption scandal in Spain has been causing trouble for the socialist government of Pedro Sanchez. Things seem to be getting worse, as now the EU's anti-fraud office is also looking into it. Essentially, the scandal surrounds former transport minister José Luis Abalos, whose former assistant has been arrested and accused of taking bribes to facilitate the purchase of face masks during the pandemic. While Abalos himself hasn't been accused of any crime, the ruling Socialist Party called on him to resign as a lawmaker, saying that he bears political responsibility and giving him a 24-hour deadline to do so. He refused to resign, though, saying, I cannot end my political career as a corrupt politician when I am innocent, adding that he continue as a lawmaker, but independent, so that he can restore his honour. In a parliamentary debate, Spain's Conservative opposition leader accused Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez, albeit without providing evidence, of knowing about the scandal and actively covering it up. Aside from the fact that the scandal is bad press for Sanchez's government, it also makes his life more politically difficult, as he already runs a minority government that relies on parliamentary support from a range of smaller parties, and now one of his own lawmakers sits as an independent, so he'll need to keep him on side too. Finally, we end with some uplifting news from California, where doctors say that a man who contracted blood cancer while living with HIV is now in remission from both serious conditions, demonstrating the effectiveness of his treatment regime for older patients. Paul Edmonds, 68, underwent reduced-intensity chemotherapy and then got a stem cell transplant with HIV-resistant donor cells and is now only the fifth known person in the world to be confirmed to be in remission from both illnesses. Edmonds says that he hopes his experience will give hope to people with HIV, and added that I want to remember all those we lost. Clearly though, the state of the world right now is plagued by uncertainty and risk. And while you've been watching the daily briefing, your personal information could easily have been sold or published online without you even knowing it. Even while recording videos, we're constantly interrupted by robocalls. And if you're wondering why you've been getting so many random numbers calling your phone, well, the answer is the malevolent workings of shady forces called data brokers. These data brokers can collect and sell your personal information to anyone, from a company to an online criminal. This data can include your name and aliases, social security number, login credentials, home address, location history, online activity, and more. Even if you're not fussed about a phone call here or there, one day it could be a little call, but the next day a huge loan taken out in your name. In fact, that exact thing happened to me a few years ago. So if you want to protect your data, Incogni is here to help. Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests your personal data removal, and deals with any objections from their side. Since many data brokers continue collecting your personal information even after they've removed it, Incogni also takes care that your data stays off the market by conducting repeated removal requests. So create an account with our link in the description, grant Incogni the ability to work on your behalf, and sit back as they make you safer. Plus, if you use our link in the description, you'll get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thanks for checking it out, and thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video.